here at Grace Baptist Church. If we can please stand and turn to M3. M3, and we'll do all four verses. Jesus paid it all.
63, and we'll do all verses. What a day that'll be. Amen. First and last, do all of them. All of them. Keep him in your prayers. 
uh, specifically for relief from the pain, but also that uh, everything will be put together smoothly so he can get this done sooner rather than later. Uh, also, the same thing can be said for Sister Jerice. Um, she's two years? About two and a half years since her accident, and she's needing surgery as well. And so just pray for her. Uh, it, is, it is not good. And then uh, pray for those that we know that uh, are pregnant, including our oldest daughter, Victoria. Uh, that the pregnancy will continue to go well and that uh, mama and baby will be fine. And then we know some folks that have had babies recently, so pray that uh, that will go fine as well. Others? Yes, ma'am. Um, for a friend of, um, some friends of mine who their husband's looking for work, um, and then for other friends, um, friends of mine who are either expecting or looking for work, um, her husband had gone to a different country in March. It was supposed to be for a week. But he's still in that country. And um, so just pray he makes it home by December when the baby starts to be born. Hopes he arrives before the baby does. Okay. All right. Yes, sir. Sure. Uh, just, just for America itself um, and uh, pray for the upcoming election. Amen. Because. Uh, yeah. Democratic. No. You know, th this election, it, it's not about a choice between uh, the left or the right, Democrat or Republican. It, it's, a, it's a choice whether or not you want America to stay America. Amen. Or if you right. want it to change permanently. And uh, it's, it's scary stuff. You know, st status, statisticians say that if every believer would go to the polls and vote, we wouldn't have half the problems we have. Amen. And that's a shame. That's a shame. But they will complain. Well, they will complain, yeah. I used to work with folks and they'd tell me, oh, I don't vote. I'd say, then I don't want to hear you complain. All right. Did you have a prayer request? No? Okay. Any, any others? <coughs> All right, Brother Jim, sir, yes. if you wouldn't mind uh, acting as usher tonight. And uh, the offering tonight, uh, give you a minute. So we're going to, the offering tonight is going to be a love offering uh, for the Leonards. So I'll give everybody a chance to, <clears throat> if you need to stand to get your wallet so you can dig deep, <clears throat> feel free to stand. Uh, but uh, while you're doing that, I guess I could tell a joke. I could, but I won't. But I won't. Oh, as far as announcements, I mentioned it on Sunday. We don't have a date yet, but uh, coming up uh, before the end of the year, we are going to be having our first annual chili cook-off. So, and, and, one, and we're actually going to have prizes. And you remember the one prize that was mentioned? <laughs> Spending time with the preacher. And, 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 uh, and, and, and uh, one of the brethren said, yeah, that's the consolation prize. Well, you know, that's a good thing. Because if, if you're sad that you didn't win, I, I can console. I can console. I, I, I can comfort. Right? And I'll tell you how good your chili is. <laughs> All right. I think everyone's ready. So, brother, if uh, if you'll pray for these requests and the offering as well, yes, sir. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, again, we do come to thank you, Lord, that we do have the opportunity to freely come to church. That when the doors are open, Lord, to worship you and, and to pay attention to what what the Word would tell us, Lord. And, and that, uh, would we, we ask again for the prayers that was asked for for medical reasons and spiritual reasons, whatever. We know that you're you're there and you're listening. Yes. We ask the Lord that you would touch and bless it, those that need it and touch those that are not surrendered to be saved yet. Yes. But now we ask that you bless the offering.
thing that it would be used to, to further the cause to get the word out to the lost and dying world. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Tim Leonard come bring tonight's message. I don't know if you can see that clock. But ignore it. Is that a clock? Well, that's good. Am I centered up there? And uh, take your Bible and turn to the book of Revelation, chapter number one. Chapter number one, book of Revelation. And uh, we'll speak to you from that portion of scripture tonight it's our privilege uh, to be here with you and uh, Grace has a long time had a relationship um, we've a long time had a relationship uh, with uh, Grace here in Bay City and, and we're glad to be back of course this was Roxanne's home church when we first went to the mission field 34 uh, years ago and uh, the Lord's been really good to us as he always has promised and said that he would be. Man. And he has always been good to us. And the Lord's been uh, just exceedingly, abundantly, <laughs> above all that he could have ever asked or thought, God has done in our lives. Amen. And I thank him for that. Uh, I was saved October the 10th, 1976. Never forget the thrill because it's real. Amen. When I got saved in 1976, God changed me put in my life and in my heart a desire to serve Him. And all these years now, the Lord has been uh, using us, and uh, we, of course, went to Tabernacle Bible College in Greenville, South Carolina, and uh, then we joined BIMI and uh, went to uh, Jamaica. And while we were in Jamaica, the Lord uh, used us, and uh, we were able to uh, uh, start uh, three different churches there, and uh, the Lord's been using uh, those churches and that ministry there for some time now. And we're thankful and grateful for that. And every once in a while, we hear uh, from one of our people in Jamaica about uh, the ministries there. And uh, for the last uh, 16 years, I've been working at the home office with BIMI uh, as a representative out of BIMI. And I work there at the home office. I manage the facilities there as far as the... Uh, the grounds and the buildings and our warehouse and, and things coming and going and, and uh, the upkeep on, on the vehicles, the fleet of vehicles we have. The IMI, we have about a thousand missionaries around the world. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. And many of them, many of them are in places today uh, preaching the gospel and giving out the gospel in countries uh, where we have thought a few years ago there would never be a missionary there. Praise God. And uh, that's amazing. And one of the things in recent years, and I'm just giving you a little something while we're coming up to Revelation here. Uh, in, in recent years, has been the uh, Bible projects that BIMI has been able to uh, do, and the Lord has opened up the opportunities for them. Some years ago, some years ago, six or seven years ago, uh, the Prime Minister of the country of Fiji uh, met one of our representatives. Uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a hotel in Fiji. He was just passing through, spent the night uh, at, close by the airport, one of the hotels, and his friend said to him, hey, that's the prime minister. And he said, oh no, that's not the prime minister. Yeah. So Alan went over and began to speak with him. And he was the prime minister. Can you imagine that? And he began to talk to him, and the, and the prime minister, Father Rama, asked Alan, said, what are you doing here? Why, we're on a Bible project. In the island of Neos, and we're just traveling through. The Prime Minister asked BIMI to come to Fiji and give out Bibles in the schools. Amen. Amen. Can you imagine that? Yes. And uh, so BIMI began, 225,000 students began to get Bibles. And I worked on that project. And through that project, um, um, my son Robbie, God called him and carried him and his family. They're now serving in Fiji on one of those outer islands, 300 and something islands. He's on one of those islands uh, preaching uh, there and giving the gospel out, starting a church there. The Lord's just doing some great things. And then you know what? Other places begin to ask BIMI. And uh, the country of Papua New Guinea uh, asked BIMI to come Lord. Now you think 225,000 is a lot. How about two and a half million? Two and a half million 
students in Papua New Guinea and the, the uh, Prime Minister, the Parliament, and uh, the, the Council of Papua New Guinea asked BIMI four years ago to come into New Guinea and go to every school, <coughs> preach the gospel, <laughs> give the Bible out Amen. in every school. Amen. Thousands and thousands and thousands of young people have been saved uh, because of this Bible Amen. project we've been working on. Now this is in collation with our missionaries in those countries, with the national churches, and uh, with, uh, of course, by government permission and government mandate. When Amen. I was in, in Fiji, they would stop the school process for the day. Sometimes they'd gather a thousand students, stand them out in rows in the sunshine on the ball field, let us preach the gospel to them. And one by one, hey. they'd come down and get their Bible. Isn't that amazing? Praise what God. What an opportunity we have in this generation and around the world. And God's done that. And uh, that's sort of uh, some of the things that I'm involved in. As a matter of fact, last week uh, I was in uh, Oxford, Alabama at Trinity Baptist Church. Brother Grinstead is pastor there. And I spoke there representing uh, the New Guinea Bible Project. And, and uh, they, they've been very uh, generous in their church. And, and uh, 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 again, they were very generous in, in uh, uh, helping with that project. Those Bibles, listen, they, you think that's a lot. They cost about $3 a piece. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine? They are printed, can you imagine, in Belarus on a communist printing press. <laughs> <laughs> that's where they're printed. And they're shipped to uh, New Guinea and uh, the South Seas. And it's amazing what God is doing. And uh, then tonight, uh, the Lord has been so good to us. And Roxanne and I are just excited about what God is doing in our ministry and, and the work there and, and the things that are going on. And, of course, all of you know we're here uh, this week, sort of an unplanned event. My brother-in-law uh, passed away last week, and so we're here uh, for the funeral on Friday. And uh, Brother Carpenter graciously asked us to speak tonight, and I count it my privilege and uh, uh, I take it a great honor to be asked. And uh, now you have your Bible and, and your thoughts are in place. Uh, we won't take a few minutes and I want to give you some things uh, from the book of Reve Revelation that I hope will be a blessing and an encouragement uh, to you as we look uh, through this book for just a, a few minutes. And uh, um, by the way, by the way, the book of Revelation is the last book in your Bible. You got that? Yeah. In your Bible study, in your Bible study now, Genesis is the first book. When you go into Genesis, the Bible says, in the beginning, God. And the last word in the book of Revelation says, uh, all. You go in and you come out all. You come out complete. Amen? Amen. He says, amen. In generation. In Genesis, we see there's a creation. In Revelation, you see a new creation. That's right. Yes. In Genesis, you see paradise lost. You see in Revelation, the new paradise. Amen. The new regenerated paradise. In Genesis, you see the last mention of the book of the tree of life. And in the book of Revelation, you find the tree of life by the river of life. Isn't that something? Amen. It's amazing. In the book of Revelation, you find the first lamb slain. The first sacrifice. In the book of Revelation, you see the lamb that was slain Amen. for the sins of men. The last lamb Amen. slain. Then in the book of uh, Genesis, you find sin introduced to mankind. And you find in the book of Revelation, no more sin. Hey. Yeah. In the book of Genesis, you find sorrow introduced to mankind. In the book of Revelation, you find no more sorrow. Hey, in the book of Genesis, you find introduced to men tears. 
in the book of Revelation, he says he'll wipe away right. our tears. That's right. It's a it's a wonderful thought. Now let me tell you in this. In the book of Genesis, you find man's cities. Babel. Babylon. Okay? You find the city where Lot was. You find Sodom and Gomorrah. You find man's city. But in the book of Revelation, you discover the city of God. Amen. Whose foundation and builder is God. Oh, man, you talk about the city of God and all those things. But we can't get into all that tonight. In the book of Genesis, we discover, we discover death is introduced to men. Yeah. God said, the day that you eat thereof, thou shalt surely die. Yeah. And it is appointed unto men once to die. The Bible says, for the wages of sin is death. Death is introduced in Genesis. Yes. But in Revelation, there's no more death. Amen. Because Jesus has the victory. That's right. He has the keys over death, over hell, and over the grave. Man, what a book. Yeah. They, they say, don't read the book of Revelation. Because it's hard to understand. Let me tell you something. It's not hard to understand. And it's not hard to read. It's easy to read. And it's easy to understand for the believer. Trust me. Notice with me. Book of Revelation. Revelation chapter number 1, verse number 1. The scripture says this. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants, the things which must shortly come to pass, and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant, John. Our Father, we thank you tonight for your word. We thank you, Lord, for uh, your scripture. Father, we, tonight, we're looking to you. We can't do anything on our own, but Father, we're looking to you for help. Father, we're praying, Lord, that you'll make us a blessing to your people that are gathered here tonight. I pray that you'll make us an encouragement to them. I pray that you'll help us to help them. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for what you do in our lives. In Christ's name we pray. The book of Revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants. Now notice something here. God has given to Jesus Christ a revelation, a revealing, an unveiling. A spotlight put on what's going to happen. But he has given it to his servants. That's right. Now let me tell you something about the Bible. Lost men cannot read the Bible and understand the Bible. Amen. They can read the Bible and understand how to be saved. They can read the Bible and understand that they are sinners. They can read the Bible and understand that there's a penalty for sin. They can read the Bible and understand that God loves them and God has made a provision for their sin. And they can read the Bible and understand how to be saved. But everything in the Scriptures is not revealed to the lost man. That's right. But notice here what it says about the book of Revelation. It says it's written to his servants. The servants are you and I that trust Christ, have trusted Christ as our Savior and are trusting Christ. Well, you and I that know Him and because we know Him, He has given us an understanding of the Scriptures. Now don't misunderstand the preacher. There's no private interpretation of the Scripture. Amen. God is right. not going to give to this preacher anything He would not give to you. He's not going to explain and reveal anything to me that he would not reveal to you, Brother Gerald. He, he's going to give you everything from the book. It's yours to read, and it's the yours to understand. Yeah. Now we've got to move along. The book of Revelation, I think, has, has really four parts. Four parts. And uh, it's the theme and uh, the revealing of Christ, the return of Christ. Chapter 1 through 5. Hey. Chapter 6 through 7, the real great tribulation. And chapter 8 through uh, 12 is the revealing of the wrath of God. 
Okay? And then the righteous end of all things finishes out the book of Revelation. And so we find ourselves in chapter number one. I want to discuss some things with you. Notice with me in chapter number one. Pick up. We're going to move on down and pick up. And in verse uh, uh, number um, five, and he says, And from Jesus Christ, who is a faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and hath made us kings and priests unto God and, uh, and his Father. And to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Now notice verse 7. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. And they also which pierced him. And all the kingdoms of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. amen. He says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord which is, which was, and which is to come. Notice the term, the Almighty. Jesus Christ. We discover today who He is. A lot of people wonder who Jesus Christ really is. That's right. The religions of the world have a Jesus Christ that they proclaim. And that Jesus Christ is not the Jesus Christ of the Bible. Amen. He is not the Redeemer of men. And uh, all those, uh, we want to call them false religions or cults or religions of the world, and you can name them. We can go through and talk about all them tonight. But they don't know the Jesus Christ of the Bible. That's right. They knew the Jesus Christ of the Bible. They wouldn't believe the things that they believe. Yeah. And if they read their Bible, they wouldn't believe the things that they believe. And notice what it says here. It says unto, unto him who he is. We're going to talk about who he is. The, the Jesus Christ of the Bible. The book of Revelation is a marvelous book. It's a book of discovery. It's a book, it, it's a book of disclosure. Yeah. It's, it's a book, book of divine nature. It's a book of deliverance. Do you know in the book of Revelation, uh, we win? Amen. 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 Right. We've got the victory. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the victory is already won. It's ours. Yeah. There's no reason to live in discouragement because we have the victory. We, it's a book of deliverance. He said, who he is. And from Jesus Christ, who is the first, who is the faithful witness. Let's talk about him for a minute. He's a faithful witness. Yeah. All of you have been at one time or another at a courthouse scene. You watched old Perry Mason, haven't you? And he gets a witness up there and he, he, he listens to what he, they say and then he, he says, now wait a minute, you're lying because you said this and this. But Jesus Christ, he's a faithful witness. Amen. Amen. He knows about you and me. Yes, he does. He knows whether you've really been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. That's right. He knows your heart. He knows everything in your mind, in your soul. He knows you and he is the witness. God's word is a witness. Amen. He is a faithful witness. He's not going to change his story. Yeah. He remains faithful. Now notice what else it says about it. He is the first begotten of the dead. Oh my. He's the first begotten of the dead. The scripture tells me, and all of you learned it in Sunday school, I, I didn't learn it in Sunday school. <laughs> For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. For the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. Some men count slackness, but is long-suffering, not willing that any Amen. should perish. Right. The Bible tells me in Proverbs, where there is no vision, the people perish. But God has a vision for you and I, and he has loved us, and it tells, tells us here that Jesus Christ, he has loved us, and he is the first begotten of the dead. You know, until him, until that resurrection Sunday, yeah. <laughs> hey. nobody had been raised from the dead on their own power. That's right. But there he lay in the tomb dead. Hey, listen, that old crowd, they want to take. He wasn't really dead, but he was dead. That's right. 
He was dead. Graveyard. There are a lot of scripture talk about he was dead. A lot of witnesses talk about he was dead. And then even if you want to go to history, history will tell you he was dead. That's right. That's why they want to rewrite history. You know that? Yes, sir. That's why they want to rewrite your Bible. Because the devil's been trying to tell that lie for a long time. Yeah. Said he's not dead. Because if he wasn't dead, he couldn't have rose. But he rose. Amen. Amen. Rose from the dead. He's a faithful witness, the first begotten of the dead. And because he lives, because he rose from that dead, <laughs> because he came out of that grave, I have this hope. That's right. That there's life after my death. I have this hope. Notice what else he said. He loved us. He's the first begotten of the dead. And notice what he said. And the prince of the kings of the earth. Now, it's notable to understand in the book of Revelation that Jesus Christ here is introduced as the prince of the kings of the earth. But later on, he's the king of kings. Amen. Later on, we discover he's the Lord of lords. Amen. Later on, we discover every name bows before him. That's right. Every, every nation, every king, Every potentate, every ruler, every man bows before him. He is the king of kings. He's right. the prince of the kings. You see, and <laughs> unto him that loved us. What he did, he, he has loved us. He's redeemed us. And he has made us kings and priests, in verse number six, unto his father. Isn't that amazing? Yes. Yeah. You know, we talk to people sometimes and witnessing to them, telling them how to be saved, and you start to discover about their religious background. And some people believe that you can't even approach God. Yeah. Oh, I have to have a, 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 somebody to do it for me. Yeah. I have to have a special priest. Mm -hmm. I have to have somebody to pray for me. And every once in a while, preacher, somebody will say to me, uh, Brother Tim, you pray for me then I'll come closer to God or, or come to know Him or something yeah. like that. And I'll say, look now, look. I can't make any difference in your life, but you can Amen. if you will come to Him. Amen. If you want somebody else to do it for you, it will not happen. Yeah. You have to do it for yourself. What He has done, He's redeemed us. Oh my, He has redeemed us. And He has loved us. And He has washed us. He's washed us. I'm sure that all of you know that He has washed us. The Bible tells me, the Bible tells me that we are washed by the Word of God. He has washed us. The Bible says in Ephesians 5 and 26, I think it is, that, that He might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the Word. Amen. Talking about his church. Okay? That he might present it to himself a glorious church. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such blemish. That he might present it to himself. He has washed us. You know, when I trusted Christ as my Savior those years ago, he washed me in the blood of the Lamb. He cleansed my soul. Amen. Not only did he cleanse my soul there that day, and he put on me the righteousness of Jesus Christ, but from day to day as I go through this life, I get dirty, and sins in this world uh, come upon me, and he still washes me by his word. Amen. He convicts me through his word. Amen. The Bible says in Titus 3, 5, now listen to me, not by the works of righteousness which we have done, but by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. The preacher tells you today that when you are saved, you are washed in the blood of the Lamb and you're renewed by the Holy Spirit. Amen. And every once in a while when you find yourself in a place of sin and you find yourself in a place of filth, in a place of dirtiness and, and all those uh, contrite things that find in your heart, 
the Holy Spirit of God speaks to you if you're saved and he convicts you and says you shouldn't have done that you shouldn't have said that you shouldn't have watched that you shouldn't have thought that he convicts you and so it is the renewing of the Holy Ghost and my it's all found right here in the book of Revelation he hath made us kings and priests unto his God and Father to be, be glory for dominion and ever we can spend a lot of time in that but here's where I want to go oh that's a good introduction Amen. Uh, Men, you ought to hear me preach outside. Uh, I can get loud. <laughs> preach five or six hundred people outside, you got to be loud. Behold, he cometh with the clouds, and every eye shall see him. What a statement. Wait a minute now. We just started the book of Revelation, and they say it's hard to understand. <laughs> Verse 7. By the way, 7 is an amazing number in the book of Revelation. Do you know that? Mm -hmm. Verse number 7. It, there's, it's, there's an amazing number. There's something like 7 trumpets. You know? There's 7 blessings. There's, there's uh, seven, 7 seals. Mm -hmm. 7 veils. Yeah. A beast with 7 horns. I mean, you can just go on and on and on about that. There's lots. I think I think there's a lot of sevens in, in the Book of Revelation. But notice what it says: "Behold, He cometh with the clouds." There's a scripture, and you should know it. Book of Acts. It said, "There, you men of Galilee, why stand you gazing up right. in heaven?" This same Jesus. Amen. This same Jesus. That's right. Not another one, not a different one. This same Jesus Christ will come again in like manner as you have seen him go. Listen, we as believers, we have this hope that Jesus Christ is coming back. Hey. The next great event on God's calendar is the return of Jesus Christ. That's right. Now we're living in desperate days and dark days, dangerous days. But we're living in days of deliverance because Jesus is coming back at any moment. Amen. At any moment. He's coming back. The scripture is full of it. And they also which pierced him and all the kindreds of the earth, that's the people of the world, shall wail because of him. That's right. Why? Because they don't want him to come back. They said when they crucified him, we'll not have this man. That's right. We'll not have him. We don't want him. But he's coming back. Oh, my, my friend tonight, he said about himself, the coming of the Lord is a very sure thing. Who he is. What he's done, he's redeemed us. And then we discover tonight that he's coming back. He's coming back. We look and think about the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. John chapter number 14 says, Let not your heart be troubled. Yeah, amen. That's right. We live, we're living in a day when men's hearts are filling them for fear. Yeah. We're yes. living in yes. a day when people are troubled on every side. Yes. Even a year ago, you'd have never thought what's happening today in the world would be happening. That's right. Yeah. We're living in a day. When Christians, their hearts are troubled and downcast and they don't understand, we don't understand what all's happening, but we are sure of this one thing, that Jesus Christ is coming back. The Bible says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse number 2, that ye be not soon shaken yeah. or be troubled Neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by a letter from me. Why? Because the day of Christ is at hand. Oh, my friend, tonight, I tell you that we, as we look through the scriptures, we look through the book of Revelation, and we discover all of these things about it, and uh, we don't have a lot of time to talk about all these things tonight. But I want you to understand in verse number 3 of the book of Revelation. You see it there? Blessed is he that readeth. 
And they that hear the words of the prophecy, those that keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Amen. Amen. Paul wrote to the church at Philippi. Chapter number 4 and verse number 5. Let your moderation be known unto all men. For the Lord is at hand. The word moderation carries the idea, carries this idea of your testimony. The things you do, the things you say, the way you behave, yep. your actions, yep. the, your thought, your process, your way of life. Oh, hey, you want to hear a good word that's been hijacked? Your lifestyle. Yeah. Your lifestyle. Your moderation. Paul told the church, he said, let your moderation be known unto all men because he has sent his Christ to redeem all men. Amen. He's sent him to redeem them. All men. Peter wrote this about that same subject. And the end of all things is at hand. Isn't that something? Yeah. Peter wrote that. Yeah. He said, the things, the end of all things is at hand. He said, be ye, be ye sober, he said. Mm -hmm. He said, be ye sober. And he said, and watch with prayer. Isn't that something? Isn't that a blessing? Just like Amen. that. Amen. This same Jesus shall come again in like manner as you have seen him come. Jesus is coming back. Amen. Now I would not have you to eat, be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you saw not even as others which have no hope. Yeah. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a trump. <laughs> you know, there's just something about the trumpet. We right. talk about the first mention of the trumpet in the book of Genesis. We're talking about those first mentioned things. Last time you hear the trumpet is in the book of Revelation. Yeah. It's something that, that one of these days the trumpet of God, the dead in Christ will rise first. We which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with the Lord in the air. Amen. So shall we ever be before. I tell you tonight who he is. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is beginning and the end. He is the Lord. The scripture says in Revelation, verse number 8, for all those people that say Jesus was just another prophet, it says there, he declares it by himself, I am the Almighty. Amen. A term given only to Almighty God. He declares it by himself. He said, I am the Almighty. He's the Word of God. He's the voice of the trumpet. He's the Son of Man. He's the God of God. He's the King of kings. He's the Lord of lords. Who he is, what he's done, he's redeemed you. He's washed you. He's cleansed you. He's purified you. He's prepared you for heaven. Amen. When he's coming, any day now, I tell you tonight, his coming is sure. His coming is soon. Amen. But I also tell you this, his coming is secret. Bible tells me that no man knoweth the hour. That's right. I couldn't. I couldn't stand here. Your pastor couldn't say he's coming this month, this year. This uh, it might be. Hang on now. You know the way the preacher's going to tell you this. It might be a hundred years from now. That's right. It might be a hundred minutes from now. That's right. <laughs> Could be any time now. Amen. And you read the scriptures, and so have I, that we're to keep our lamps. That's right. Trimmed and burning. Trimmed means you cut off all that stuff that don't need to be on there. All that burn off. And that's a whole nother long message on that, isn't it? <laughs> uh, Getting all that stuff that ain't no good, where the, where the oil can come out of you, the Holy Spirit, and that light can burn bright. You can be seen for miles and miles and miles. When I was in Fiji, I was staying at this government house. Doesn't that sound big? 
this little wooden building about 20 by 20 up on a hill on one of these islands. I'd gone to see, 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 see the uh, uh, chief of that island to get permission, although we already had permission, but the, you know, it's customary. So I went to see, and chief said, you can stay in our guest house, our government house. So that's good, because we didn't have anywhere to stay. So we went up there to this government house, and I was sitting there and on the front porch, and no electricity, and it was dark, and the sun went down, and way off in the distance, across the island, across the water, I could see a light. Way over there. Just barely, just barely. Just barely. And I thought, I wonder if that's a star, or a satellite, or what that is. So I asked one of the national pastors that was with me. I said, what is that out there? He said, that's another island. We hadn't been there yet. We hadn't been there yet. Listen, we need to take the gospel. Yes. We need to send the gospel. Amen. We need to carry the gospel. We Amen. Every day, every place you go. Our Father, we thank you tonight for the opportunity to speak to your people. Lord, I pray that you'll bless them. They've been such a good crowd tonight. Lord, and they've listened. And they know the verses and they know the scriptures. And I think that probably nothing I said tonight was a surprise to them. But Father, I pray, Lord, that you'll just encourage them, enrich them, and enlighten them from your word. Lord, we love you tonight. Lord, I know we don't love you necessarily like we ought to, the way we should. But Lord, we love you. And we pray, Lord, that you help our faith to increase. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.